Hello, my name is Adrian Stevens and I'm here with Wilderness Labs. And today I'm going to talk about architecting IoT applications with C Sharp and Meadow. Now, you've probably seen a lot of videos already about Meadow and hopefully you've seen some of the really cool things the team has done with you know, cloud integration and building you know, industrial grade sensors and, and systems. And you might be wondering, well, how do I bring all that together in a scalable pattern where I can make maintainable, updatable, and reusable applications using Meadow and, uh, and C Sharp? And that's what we'll talk about today. Now, we're all, you know, us in the .NET world, you know, we've come from a lot of really great frameworks. You know, I'm a big mobile guy. I did a lot of Xamarin work. Uh, I love MAUI. And in those frameworks, we think a lot about abstraction, and code reuse and separation of concerns. And it turns out that, that all of the things still apply when we're building IoT solutions. But some of the patterns we use are a little bit different, although they're going to seem pretty familiar. Now, when we think about something like a mobile device, for example, and we might use a pattern like model view controller, and that makes a lot of sense when we have a pretty much a known view. You know, we might have different devices, might even have different form factors, but they all have a display and they all have similar capabilities. They're full color displays. They've got touch input. And we've got pretty much a known hardware set. But when we're building custom IoT projects, well, suddenly we don't have necessarily that common hardware platform. And almost by design, because when we ultimately want to build production hardware, we want to be using hardware that meets the needs of our system and our solution and not include things we don't need. And that might even mean building a headless application. So something like model view controller doesn't necessarily make sense when there might not even be a view. Or additionally, you might have a system where there's multiple views. You might have multiple displays, for example. Uh, I'm personally building a hobby project at home where it's a skee-ball machine and there's two displays on it. Or imagine something even more, more industrial. You're doing in, you know, control, environmental controls for an office or maybe for an entire, uh, entire building. And you've got multiple control panels and multiple views. And well, what would that architecture look like? And so what we see in the hardware world is really what we like to call a controller pattern. And so rather than thinking about things in terms of views, we encapsulate functionality into a controller. And what's beautiful about that is in that model, we can have many, many controllers, and we can build a hierarchy of controllers that make sense for the nature of our application. And on top of that, with a controller pattern, we want to combine that with hardware abstraction so we can then be really flexible about where and how we're getting, say, sensor data or user input. OK, so a lot of that was a little bit abstract. So what I want to do is dive into some code and see what this looks like in an actual application. Now, here I've got Visual Studio, and I've got a project open called Cultivar. And Cultivar is all about uh, you know, really farming and gardening and actually running a greenhouse. And so you know, you know, taking care of plants, uh, and whether that's you know, watering them or getting soil moisture data, making sure the environment is set correctly with the right temperature. We don't want to freeze and lose our crops, for example. And so it's a bit of a complex solution and a really great example of how we can architect a mobile or a, a IoT application. So I want to start first and foremost with the controllers. And a pattern we like to see in IoT is this idea of a primary controller, which actually might even be a lot like that controller in like an MVC pattern or other pattern for using. And then these more specialized specific controllers for other aspects of our hardware build. And in the case of Cultivar, we've got a greenhouse controller because it is to control a greenhouse. It makes a lot of sense. But just exactly like I said with the view, we also have a dedicated controller for the display. And in this case, the display is actually a control panel. If you look on the desk here, you can see it's running on a project lab. And there's some, uh, if we zoom in, you can see there's some temperature data, some soil moisture data, and there's actually some stats, uh, status information about uh, properties of the greenhouse. You know, so we can turn on lights and fans and things like that. And this is a, a really actually an HMI, a human machine interface, where well, it's like a control panel. It's somewhere we go push the buttons and, and see status and change the properties of our greenhouse. And so what's beautiful here is this is a really nice example of where we have core functionality of the greenhouse and then a dedicated controller for the display. And then I'll, I'll jump into that quickly and I'll show you some code in the display. And what's nice about the display here is you're going to see lots of things about building a UI. And this is actually something called um, the micro layout, which is a, a framework for building layouts just like this on the HMI here. Um, but 
even that doesn't matter as much. What's important here is this is C-sharp code for drawing to this screen. And if we look at the dependencies we instantiate the display controller, what we're passing in here is actually an abstraction. In this case, it's an eye graphics display. It's an abstraction that represents a display. And so this controller doesn't need to know about all of the aspects of the overall build. It's focused on updating the display. And then if you go through, you'll see some specific methods about sending data to this controller so it can then render and then return events back to the core greenhouse controller. And if we look at the greenhouse controller as well, we jump in and we'll see it then owns an instance of that display controller. Let me zip up to the top here. And you can see here, the primary controller, the greenhouse controller, owns the display controller. And then it also does some cloud logging as well, so sending data up to the cloud. And now in this case, this controller is also responsible for collecting environmental data, but we could very easily have an environmental controller as well and abstract out that functionality of collecting data and build our app into little controller chunks. So again, it's really easy to scale, maintain, and understand the overall structure and flow of our application. And now there's one other really important part about this, um, and that's how we define the hardware. And the beautiful thing about using Meadow and C Sharp and really Meadow Foundation is that we've got interfaces or abstractions for almost all the things we would put into an IoT application. And so if I open up the hardware folder, let's open up our I greenhouse interface here. Let's make a little bit more room. What I want to show you here is that there's it's an interface full of abstractions, really an interface defining uh, I, I greenhouse hardware, so a definition for our hardware. And notice it's also using interfaces. We have an I moisture sensor, an interface that represents a moisture sensor. So this is not defining a specific sensor or specific piece of hardware. It says I need something that has the capabilities of a moisture sensor. I need something that has the capability of a graphics display, then that has the capability of a temperature sensor. Now, if we zoom back a little bit, if we go look at the Solution Explorer, you'll notice here I'm actually in a project called Cultivar Core. It's a little bit of a hint of where this code is. Uh, and this is actually a core library that's shared by multiple projects. And for those of you who've done mobile, uh, this might seem a little bit familiar. It's a little bit like how we might do Xamarin or Maui apps. We have this core logic where we can share a lot of our, our, our business logic, our definitions, and then do platform specific implementations. And again, very similar here. So if I open up the Meadow app project, let me open the hardware folder. You can see here we have a, a production beta hardware uh, class. And that's really the idea is that's the hardware that's represented. And if you look on the desk, this is our project lab. And so this is now the concrete implementation of our abstract hardware definition. And again, notice we're, we're implementing those things. Here's our temperature sensor, I temperature sensor. Where's that coming from? Well, that's actually coming from the environmental sensor on project lab. Humidity sensor coming from the environmental sensor on project lab. So now we were, we we're implementing that abstraction represent our hardware, and now that's a, a specific hardware definition for this platform. Where this gets really fun, though, is now if we're building multiple hardware variations, so we might be, say, prototyping on Project Lab, and then moving closer to a production hardware, where maybe we have a custom PCB, we're now using different sensors. Maybe we don't need all the things that are on Project Lab. A great example of that is there's a, a BMI 270. There's a, a, an accelerometer, um, a motion sensor on Project Lab. We might not need that for a greenhouse. So we can skip that and then build uh, a production PCB with only the parts we need. And then we implement this interface using those parts. Again, I love the abstraction patterns in C Sharp. We use that here in Meadow. So I want to show you one more quick thing here to really show you how powerful this is. And so if we look at our projects, they've got another one here called Cultivar Simulator. And it's laid out in a similar fashion. Notice we've got hardware. We've actually got another implementation of our hardware abstraction called simulated hardware. And this should just come up here in one moment. And you can probably see where I'm going with this here. We've got a concrete implementation, but for a simulated environment. And this is really cool. We actually have here an Avalonia app that is simulating our HMI, our, our, our app that is running on the project lab. And so we're using a lot of the same logic. Um, we didn't talk about this a lot, but there's a couple of libraries for doing uh, graphics and displays in Meadow Foundation. There's a micro layout for doing layouts. There's micro graphics for doing uh, pixel accurate graphics drawing. 
And what's beautiful about this simulation environment is it's using the exact same libraries to draw a desktop application. And so this is now simulating, and it's using the exact same code as the code running on Project Lab, which is running on a microcontroller. How amazing is that? This is a Windows device, a high-powered laptop, running the exact same code that is running on an F7 microcontroller. And I'll just show you quickly here, and I love this environment. In this case, it's actually scaled up, so we've got a bigger view of it. But it's the exact same interface. Uh, in this case, we're simulating the temperature data and the humidity data, because I don't have a sensor uh, capable of getting humidity on my laptop. Uh, and again, that's just how we're implementing that, uh, that abstraction. So if I go back to the code here, I just want to show you quickly both of these projects again, are referencing our cult of our core. And so we can put our core logic for our greenhouse and then do platform-specific implementations. Uh, a beautiful way of developing. And then with the simulation environment, we get that advantage of fast iteration, quick development cycles, and then we can deploy to our microcontroller and get it out in the field. So a quick preview of how we think about architecting IoT applications uh, with Meadow and .NET. Again, think controllers, think abstractions, and you're going to have a happy path to go from prototype to production. Thank you very much. <laughs>